Okay guys, this is a big deal. We just got the brand new trailer. Our first look at Disney Plus's brand new live action Figaro movie. And I guess Pinocchio's there as well. Here's my question, is Pinocchio dead in this movie? We'll get to that. Anyway, welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And that's right, we are getting yet another Disney live action remake of a classic beloved animated film. What would Walt have to say about that? Nothing, because he's dead. But Walt would be rolling in his grave. And if you want to get one of these delightful Walt would be rolling in his grave t-shirts for yourself, you now can, thanks to today's sponsor, the Teacup for One t-shirt tea shop. Yep, I'm sponsoring another one of my videos because I can. Uh, I just, uh, I don't want to waste video time talking about it. I design t-shirts. I think they're funny. I think they look good. If you agree and you want to buy one, please do. Stuff down there, whatever. So today, we're doing a trailer reaction and analysis for the brand new Disney Plus original live action remake of Disney's Pinocchio. That's a mouthful because there's a lot to unpack there. And just like the trailer, there is a lot to dive into with this trailer. And it's interesting because I think this is the first live action remake where our title character, our main character, isn't a human. It's a cartoon or it's like he's entirely CGI. I guess we kind of got that with Lion King and it didn't really work. So I don't know, I have my hesitations. I don't know if this movie is going to work with the character we're supposed to care the most about being fully CGI. And it's not even that. I think what's weird about it is that this is the first time we've had a live action remake where one of the characters can and does look like their animated counterpart brought to life because the puppet that we're gonna see in this live action remake is like the cartoon Pinocchio, but just in the flesh, in the wood. So I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe it'll be great. Maybe it won't. I think it'll be really weird seeing that little puppet we all know and love, like in a real life capacity, but with a different voice. Who knows? And we don't even hear the voice in the trailer. I don't know. There's a lot to unpack. Let's just get into it. Let's watch the trailer. Same as usual. I'll pause it whenever I feel like it. I'll give you my thoughts. We'll move on. It'll be great. Here we go. All right, the Pinocchio trailer. Let's go. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world. Oh God, no, no, no. Make it stop, make it stop. Wrong Pinocchio trailer. Definitely the wrong Pinocchio trailer. Although I think this is really telling. <laughs> That one of the biggest TikTok memes from the last little while exists because of how bad this recent Pinocchio movie was. And Pinocchio movies just don't have a good track record with being good. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but there was that Pinocchio movie that came out with Jonathan Taylor Thomas as the voice of Pinocchio. And I haven't seen it in a long time. I remember it was critically panned, but thinking back, to me, that's the only way a Pinocchio movie can work. Pinocchio should be a puppet, which he was in that film. But also, people were like, this is really weird. I don't like watching this creepy puppet come to life. I think Pinocchio is a story that was best interpreted as a Disney animated classic because a puppet coming to life, it's the thing of most people's nightmares. There are multiple movies, multiple Twilight Zone episodes all about it. If it's a cartoon, like a 2D cartoon, then you have that little bit of division. It's not as creepy. But as other live action adaptations have shown us, Pinocchio in the flesh, or again, in the wood, it's always kind of weird. I don't know, but you know, Disney has made things work in the past that nobody thought would ever work. So maybe this is the movie to do it. Okay, no, seriously though, let's get into the trailer. With all of that said, let's see if we think Disney's gonna make it work. Okay, I'm just gonna pause right there. How many seconds in are we? Okay, we're 17 seconds in. Disney, I know you're proud of your work, but do you really want to advertise that this is from the same studio that gave us the live action Beauty and the Beast and live action Lion King? Like, both of those movies, sevens at best. Jungle Book, 
Cinderella. Those are probably the two strongest Disney live action remakes. Open with those. But, okay, whatever. Moving on. Okay, there is a lot that I love in these few seconds. A lot that redeems Disney name drop in Beauty and the Beast and Lion King. Because first of all, we have this lovely shot of the cuckoo clocks. There's a ton there that just spikes my nostalgic Matt heart. Because of course, that's a visual that is highly associated with Pinocchio. Because Geppetto is a toy maker, Geppetto makes clocks, and I believe that's even one of the most beautiful shots in the original animated film. I can't even say most beautiful shots, because as terrifying as that original Pinocchio film is, visually, I think it's one of the most beautiful things that Disney has done. And those cuckoo clocks, so good. But the other reason that this cuckoo clock shot is so good is because it calls to mind one of my other favorite movies, which incidentally was also directed by Robert Zemeckis. I am of course talking about Back to the Future. I think he's a poetically perfect choice because Zemeckis is the type of filmmaker where his movies, they are very hit and miss solely because he is such a risk taker. And when a Zemeckis film hits right, it's groundbreaking. It is like life-changing as an audience member. I would go so far as to say industry-changing in terms of the film industry. Just think of movies like Back to the Future, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, those are just two examples, but you look at those, I think you see Zemeckis at his absolute best. If you look at Back to the Future, I think that's a great example of how well Zemeckis can do with character pieces, with giving us beautiful, fleshed out, dynamic characters, but within the framework of this technically very compelling special effects driven film. I think Back to the Future is brilliant for that reason. If you look at Who Framed Roger Rabbit, same thing, dynamic characters, but that is truly a film that is a technical marvel that he headed. So he's done really well, but he also likes to take risks that don't always pay off. For example, motion capture. All of the motion capture movies. They even made fun of it in Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Remember that animation style where everything looked real, but nothing looked right? That was pretty well just a Robert Zemeckis call out. So we think of things like Polar Express, or even more recently, Welcome to Marwin, which I didn't see, but he, he loves the uncanny valley. So it's interesting to me that he is the person who is heading this film where the heart and soul is a little CGI puppet. Because... I think Zemeckis does well with special effects, not so well with CGI. That's the conclusion I literally just came to in the moment talking to you. So, there it is. Moving on. Bob Zemeckis, though. I adore your work. Moving on. Okay, I need to rewatch that again. Hold on. him I love him so much honestly the only thing I was excited about with this Pinocchio film was that I was gonna get to see a live-action Figaro and this trailer has not disappointed the little meow absolutely perfect and something that's very important to me when we got that teaser uh, trailer at the d23 expo a little bit ago um, the Figaro that we saw it was very clearly just an artist rendering and yes it was adorable because first of all it's a tuxedo cat second of all it's Figaro it's impossible to not be adorable but the markings on his little face, they were reminiscent of what tuxedo cats look like in real life, which is not really what we get with Figaro. Because with Figaro, like, he has white that kind of surrounds his eyes. Typically, tuxedo cats just have, like, a little stripe of white going up in between their eyes. Small detail, but I am so happy that they found a cat. Okay, let's be honest. I am so happy that they computer animated a cat that does have a little bit of white surrounding its eyes. Because that is so characteristic of... Figaro. It's a small thing, but as a cat person, as a Disney person, as a Disney cat person who loves Figaro, <laughs> that was unexpected to me, and I loved it. And his little meow, it's adorable. Uh, but this isn't just an I love Figaro video, no, we are doing a trailer analysis. I paused the trailer, specifically to get a good look at Figaro, because obviously. But I noticed something else. Look at this. Now, I know we're all distracted by the adorable kitten, but just look slightly over to the right. We have a framed photograph. Now, what does this look like? This looks like a very human child who is dressed identical to the Pinocchio puppet. He has the feather in his hat. He has the lederhosen. This is my question, and it's a very serious question. 
is the movie implying that Geppetto had a son who died and that Pinocchio is kind of his way of coping with that loss. Now, I want to believe that the movie won't dive into that at all, but we'll just get little visual hints like this framed photo. If that is the case, I am genuinely interested in this film, and I do think that is a tragically beautiful choice. Because the thing with Geppetto, I don't know, he's a character that's always just been kind of weird. Like, it's an old man who just wants a kid, and then all of a sudden he gets a kid. And it's not like he's a young guy who's, like, not able to find a wife or a life partner and wants to adopt a kid. No, no. This is a gentleman who has lived an entire life, an entire childless life, presumably. And then, like, he's a senior citizen. And then he decides, now I want to raise a kid. There are just so many unanswered questions, I think, about Geppetto as a character. And if we just have those little visual clues, like that framed photo, with no additional context. I don't need additional context. I just want to know that that's something that Tom Hanks, the actor, had in the back of his mind, something that Bob Zemeckis had in the back of his mind as the director, to help give some heart to the story. Geppetto, I think, has always been the heart of the story, but we haven't had any answers about him. We just have this old man who wishes for a kid, builds a puppet, then the puppet comes to life. If, supporting that, you have the backstory of a widower, because if he had a kid, he must have had a wife. She's not there either. So if you have the backstory of this old man who lost his wife and lost his son, all he has is making toys for the village. Oh my gosh, he probably makes toys to connect with the kids because he lost his own kid. If you have that, and then he wants a kid to fill that like place in his heart, and then he's putting all the love he had for his in real life son into building this little puppet and then that puppet comes to life? I will cry so hard. I'm already getting emotional and all of this is just me speculating based on a framed photo next to the cat. Oh, I, I hope, I hope so dearly that that's something that is going to be like tastefully and sparingly explored in the film because that will make this a worthy remake. The other funny thing about that is if that is the direction they go in, this is kind of like Disney's version of Chucky because you have a doll that gets possessed. Okay, moving on. Starlight, star bright. Oh my gosh, I just realized the way he holds the little puppet's hand. I love it. Okay, moving on. I wish I may. I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. So, Tom Hanks as Geppetto. He's saying some of the most famous words in Disney history. I was on the fence about the Tom Hanks casting. I'll be honest. He is almost objectively one of the greatest actors of our generation. And I love watching Tom Hanks in anything. But I always have a hard time getting past his Tom Hanksed. -ness. Like when I saw A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, when I saw Saving Mr. Banks, he's playing iconic characters that we all know. But all I think is there's Tom Hanks again. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the makeup. Maybe it's the accent. Maybe it's how he's holding his voice. I see less Tom Hanks in his characterization of Geppetto than I expected to. I'm also getting a ton of heart. And maybe it's just me still riding the coattails of being really emotional from what I speculated based on that framed photo of the kid, but I don't know. Tom Hanks' is Geppetto, I like it so far. Moving on. When you wish upon a star. Whew. There she is. Oh my gosh. It's Cynthia. Cynthia Erivo. We all knew she was the Blue Fairy. I don't know why I didn't put together that that would mean we'd get to hear her sing When You Wish Upon a Star. It's perfect. Those who don't know, Cynthia Erivo. Whew. I mean, she she was just cast as Alphaba in the live-action Wicked adaptation. 
I just, I think she is a fascinating performer. She is incredibly talented. She really burst out on the scene a couple years ago when she was Seely in the Broadway revival of The Color Purple. And ever since then, I just think, well, based on talent alone, in addition to probably great representation and great work ethic, but just, to me, it seems like Cynthia Revo, because she was so talented, all of a sudden the world was just like, wow, she's fantastic. Put her in everything. And they did. And I love it. Ooh, you know, I'm going to be honest. Beyonce's cover of Can You Feel the Love Tonight was what I was looking most forward to in The Lion King. And I just thought it was eh, whatever. But Cynthia Erivo singing When You Wish Upon a Star. Oh. Even if the movie is terrible, I'm glad it got made. Because that will be a treat for the ears. Absolutely. We love Cynthia. Look her up. Listen to her singing. It's great. Moving on. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, I almost don't want to go back. But I will, I will. What the chirp is that? Like, I know it, I know it's Jiminy Cricket. I should have anticipated that this would be a problem. I don't know why I didn't. <sighs> this is an example of why certain things should just be left as animations. You know, like everyone knows that Disney's original Jiminy Cricket looked nothing like a cricket. We just took it on good faith that his name is Cricket, therefore that's what he is. We could suspend our disbelief. Disney definitely had a hurdle to jump with live actionifying Jiminy Bleepin' Cricket. It's the same thing actually that we saw with Beauty and the Beast where the enchanted objects, they looked one way in the animated film and then they're just not meant to exist in real life, looking that way. Perfect example, Mrs. Potts. That's why Mrs. Potts in the live action film, her face is just on the side of the teapot because they couldn't make it work to have like the spout be her nose like in the animated film. This is another character that very evidently is not meant to exist in real life. Crickets look one way. Jiminy Cricket looks another way. They're not meant to mate. Ugh. They're just not. They're just not. I don't like it. Get rid of it. Moving on. Who's voicing Jiminy Cricket? Hold on. Oh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I don't hate it. Well, I don't hate it as much as I hate the visuals. Actually, is it just me or does he kind of look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt? <laughs> if Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a terrifying animated cricket. Okay, let's just move on from this. All right, I am loving everything that I'm seeing that has to do with Stromboli and the puppet show. Like, that little glimpse that we got of Stromboli, it struck fear into my heart. And Stromboli is the Disney villain that, I don't know why, just absolutely triggers me as being, in some ways, the scariest. And that guy's pulling it off. This shot of the marionette, pre like, presumably at Stromboli's puppet show, I don't know, there's something really visually stunning about that. And I don't know what it is. I get the vibe that this puppet is also alive. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about the fluidity of how she's doing her pirouettes and moving her arms. I know that could just be the... It's obviously a CG puppet. It could just be the CG doing its job very, very well. But I think it kind of defeats the purpose if other puppets are alive. Because the whole point is that Pinocchio is alive but is also a puppet and that's why he's a star that's why everybody wants him if this puppet is also alive and just happens to have strings i i don't enjoy that oh i really hope they don't add this subplot where there are other puppets that are alive and then pinocchio befriends them that's that that's not it so anyway i'm just i'm choosing to believe that just a very good inanimate puppet that spins incredibly well better than the laws of physics should allow moving on Okay, they just do a split second appearance, a cameo, if you will, in the trailer, but I had to pause it. So we have Honest John and Gideon. Honest John is going to be voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, who I absolutely love all the work of, and I just... <laughs> there's something so dynamic about this fox and about this hilarious <laughs> bumbling cat. And I truly feel like these character designs are doing justice to their counterparts in the original animated film, in a way that... 
I guess we're not getting from the other CG characters. I mean, I've already established that Jiminy Cricket freaks me the bleep out. And I don't think they could have done any better. This isn't me judging the work of the animators. It's me judging the overall choice to turn Pinocchio into a live live action film to begin with. I think these are characters that do work. Yes, I recognize them as those original characters, but they're doing their own thing. They're separate enough that I can like embrace these guys as their own thing. And I can, and I do. Uh, we haven't actually seen Pinocchio yet in this trailer, have we? Oh, let's see if he let's see if he shows up. Oh, sorry. That's her. That's Cynthia. We love Cynthia. We love Cynthia. Okay. We still haven't seen Pinocchio, though. Yep, okay, I'm right. We literally go through that entire trailer, and we don't see our title character. I think that's an interesting choice. Like, that's a bold choice. Now, we do kind of see Pinocchio on the poster, which also released today, but even then, we're not getting a clear view of him. It is mostly in silhouette with a little bit of detail. There was a promo image that was released a couple months ago where we did get to see the puppet in its full glory, but that's him, presumably, before he's transformed into a real boy, or at least a real possessed puppet. Disney is holding off, seemingly, on delivering to us our title character in his full glory. Like, we haven't seen what the fully animated, both literally animated, but also in the story, the animated Pinocchio looks like. <sighs> and the optimist in me wants to believe that it's a choice so that when we do see the movie, it's that much more magical when he comes to life. But, considering that this movie isn't coming out for another what? It's June, July, August. Another four-ish months. It's making me wonder if they don't have anything audience ready to show us of Pinocchio yet. Because again, I think that's the biggest struggle with any Pinocchio live action film. Having the main character be someone that we can like root for, somebody that we can love. Somebody who's not creepy, I'm just gonna say it. It is so hard to do a live action Pinocchio film where the puppet isn't creepy. Disney kind of has the advantage because they have the ultimate Pinocchio that already has our hearts, but then I think they are, again, also at that disadvantage because we all know what Pinocchio looks like. And they're trying to recreate that in a live action setting. I'm not confident it's gonna work. And the fact that we don't see him in this trailer is making me less confident that it's going to work because I just pictured Disney is now scrambling to figure out how to make live action Pinocchio carry a movie. But, maybe they're holding us in suspense. I don't know. I don't know. Just solely based on what I saw in the trailer, these are the things that I like. First of all, Figaro. Actually, the first five things that I like are just going to be Figaro. I'm going to watch this movie for that cat, because it's adorable and I love it. After Figaro, Cynthia Erivo. A star. Adore her. Next is Cynthia, Tom Hanks as Geppetto. Just a little glimpse I saw of his performance. Pleasantly surprising. And, again, I am freaking out over that framed photo of the real-life human child. Now, maybe I'm just reading too much into it, and maybe the backstory that I just came up with on the fly for Geppetto is way too dark for a Disney live-action remake. But again, if they just pepper that in and just imply that Geppetto at one point did have a son that he no longer has, I think that's going to give a level of depth to the film that will help it in the long run. Things that I don't love, the CGI Jiminy Cricket, and the prospect of a CGI Pinocchio. So really, really the two most important characters in the movie, I'm not sold on. It's also interesting because this is not the only big Pinocchio movie that we are getting this year. Because Disney Plus, like one of the streaming giants, has their Pinocchio film coming out on Disney Plus Day, one of my personal favorite made up holidays, but Netflix, also has their Pinocchio movie coming out, I think a little bit later, probably around American Thanksgiving or Christmas. I'm almost wondering if Disney is trying to get the leg up on Netflix by releasing their Pinocchio film a couple months earlier, because inevitably there are going to be comparisons. And the Netflix Pinocchio film is being directed by Guillermo del Toro. I cannot wait to see what Guillermo does with Pinocchio. You know what, let's watch Guillermo's trailer. Why not? We're here, it's a lot shorter, hold on.
I want to tell you a story. All right. This is the kind of innovation that I want to see from a Pinocchio movie. Because as I have said multiple times, I don't think Pinocchio works in a live action setting. There needs to be some kind of animation. This, I believe, is real life stop motion animation. I adore stop motion animation. And I think it is the perfect medium for a Pinocchio film. Also, Ewan McGregor as Jiminy Cricket? Yes, please. Okay, but let's see if this cricket is just as creepy. It's a story you may think you know, but <laughs> you don't. Yes, this Jiminy Cricket, kind of creepy, but creepy in the way crickets should be. I look at that and I see a cricket that is both anatomically correct to what I know crickets to look like, but it is stylized and it is beautiful. Like, this is a beautiful stop-motion cricket. And I think Guillermo's film has the leg up on Disney's because they don't have a Jiminy Cricket template that they have to live up to. They could just create the character, make him look like a cricket, and then stylize him within the overall aesthetic for their movie. To me, this works a lot better. Let's, uh, let's keep going. It's a story you may think you know, but <laughs> you don't. Not really. You see, I, Sebastian J. Cricket, Ooh, his name is Sebastian J. Cricket. I almost wonder if this <laughs> is Netflix kind of being passive aggressive towards Disney because they're saying, well, this is the story you might think you know, AKA from the Disney film, but you don't. Also, my name is Sebastian Cricket. Just again, proving to you that you don't know the story because my name's not Jiminy, it's Sebastian. Hmm. Was there. As a matter of fact, I lived, actually lived in the heart of the wooden boy. <laughs> okay, that is cool. I, again, I'm in love with this animation, but him just saying I lived in the heart of the wooden boy, if he's speaking literally, I just, I think that is something that makes so much sense that I've never seen in a Pinocchio adaptation. The idea that yes, because Pinocchio is a puppet, he is just wood. Jiminy could live in his heart. Or sorry, Sebastian. The cricket conscience could live in his heart. That is beautiful. Ugh, I don't want to make it a competition between the two Pinocchio films, but I think I trust Guillermo a little bit more. And I mean, comparing Guillermo del Toro to Bob Zemeckis, that's like comparing apples to, I don't know, like slightly different apples. So they're both equally delicious apples that are different but just as fantastic. I could have said apples and oranges but I don't care for oranges. But I think the reason that Guillermo has the leg up, it has nothing to do with his capabilities as a director because I think they are both equally genius filmmakers. I think it has to do with the fact that Pinocchio is a story that benefits from being retold and reinvented instead of backtracking to try to recreate something that was done seamlessly and almost flawlessly the first time, AKA the Disney film. And that's the problem with the live action remakes. They are reimagining somebody else's reimagining of a story. So it's like when you photocopy an image and then you photocopy the photocopy and then keep doing that, you lose quality in the image. And I think that's what the live action remakes are. No matter how talented the cast is, no matter how skilled the director is, they have to fit a mold. They have to look a certain way, they have to sound a certain way, because the entire money-making machine of these live-action remakes is to capitalize on the nostalgia of those original films. And as a Disney fan, of course I'm going to see it, of course there are going to be moments that I absolutely love. But as a film person, as somebody who likes movies and as somebody who likes reimaginings and new adaptations of classic stories, I don't know, the Guillermo one to me is a lot more thrilling. But, we just have to give it a few months. We'll see which wooden puppet reigns supreme. Anyway, friends, for now, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 4-1. Now let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think of the live action Pinocchio trailer and which Pinocchio film are you more excited for? Disney's or Netflix's? And if you wanna be the first to know when I release more videos talking about Disney, movies, Shakespeare, sometimes cats, sometimes Funko Pops. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And if you haven't subscribed already, it is so easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's the tea cup for one. I love Figaro so much. <laughs>